Let's open our Bibles to the book of Isaiah, chapters 15 and 16. Isaiah 15 and 16. Moab's ruin prophesied. Moab's ruin prophesied. Isaiah 15. The divine judgments about to come upon the Moabites. Verse 1. The Moabites were frequently at odds with the Israelites. During Israel's exodus from Egypt, Moab, Moabite King Balak had hired Balaam to curse the Israelites. But Yahweh didn't allow him to do so in Numbers 22. Moabite women had attempted to seduce the Israelites in Numbers 25 verses 1 to 9. During the era of the Jews, of the judges, judges, the era of the judges, Moab had oppressed and financially burdened Israel unto, uh, until Judge Ehud assassinated the, the Moabite king Eglon in Judges 3 verses 12 to 30. Saul and David had both defeated Moab, but Solomon had been persuaded by one of his wives to worship the Moabite god Shemosh. The Moabite god Shemosh in 1 Kings 11 verses 1 and 7. And, and Shemosh is a, 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 a demon that required them even to sacrifice their children. During the era of the Jew, of the judges, Moab, therefore, I say, oppressed and financially burdened Israel. Verses 1 to 5. The origin of Moab can be traced back to the child conceived as a result of the incestuous relationship with between, between Lot and his older daughter in Genesis 19 verses 30 to 38. Moab is going to be destroyed but not because of its ethnic heritage. Yahweh despises the Moabites false gods and high places of idolatry. He hates the way they have repeatedly turned against his people with violence. Yet Isaiah appears to demonstrate a heart of sympathy for Moab in distress. Entire cities are and could will fall in a single night. Even armed men trained for danger will be filled with fear in the face of a far more powerful enemy. Verse 5. This is not the first time Yahweh, Yahweh's, uh, with Yahweh's sympathy has uh, been recorded for more. Israel had not been permitted to destroy uh, Moab on the way of the promised land, on the way to the promised land in Deuteronomy 2 verse 9. Nor was Moab among the nations that were to be dispossessed by Joshua and his generation during the conquest of Canaan. Ruth had been from Moab returning to Israel with, with Noamai to eventually become the great-grandmother of David and be included in the genealogy of Yahshua in Ruth 4 verses 15 to 22. It is clear that Yahweh's mercy extends beyond the borders of Israel. This prophecy coming to pass within three years, when the time when prophet Isaiah uh, said this prophecy, three years let us 
it came to pass. This would confirm the prophet's mission and the belief in all his other prophecies. Concerning Moab, it is foretold first that the Egypt series should be surprised, surprised by the enemy. Great changes and very dismal ones may be made in a very little time. Second, the Moabites would have recourse to their idols for relief. Ungodly people, ungodly people, when in trouble, have no comfort. That have no comfort. But they are seldom brought by their terrors to approach our forgiving God with true sorrow and believing prayer. Third, there should be the cries of grief through the land. It is poor relief to have many fellow sufferers, many fellow mourners. Four, Fourth, the courage of their soldiers should fail. Yahweh can easily deprive a nation of that on which it depended for strength and defense. Fifth, the calamities should cause grief in the neighboring parts, the neighboring regions. So enemies to Israel, yet as our fellow creatures, it should be grievous to see them in such distress. We have an obligation of compassion. In verses 6 to 9, the prophet describes the woeful lamentations heard through the country of Moab when it became a prey to the Assyrian army. The country should be plundered and famine is usually the sad effect of war. Those who are eager to get abundance of this world and to lay up what they have gotten, little consider how soon it may be all taken from them. While we warn, while we, we warn our enemies to escape from ruin, let us pray for them that they may seek and find forgiveness of their sins. Isaiah 16. Isaiah 16 verses 1 to 5. Moab is exhorted to yield obedience. Moab would have done well to unite with Judah and by sending them lambs because Judah will escape the conquest of the Assyrians as we see it in Isaiah 10 verses 24 to 25. Instead, Moab will experience great suffering as we see it in Isaiah 15, 6 to 9 and 16, 7 to 12. Yahweh tells sinners what they may do to prevent ruin. So, and that is our role, uh, in our role, in our role, our mission in, evangel, uh, in evangelization. So, the, so he does to Moab here. Let them send the tribute they formerly engaged to pay to Judah, he tells them. Take it as good advice. Break off your sins by righteousness. It may lengthen your quiet, your quietness. And this may be applied to the great gospel duty, as I just said of submission to Yahshua. Send him the lamb, the best you have, yourselves as living sacrifice, because we are not in the, in the testament, in the, in the covenant of lamb, physical lamb offerings. We are we're sacrificing our own hearts, 
as a living sacrifice. When you come to Yahweh, who is the great, he, the, the great ruler, come in the name of the Lamb, the Lamb of God. Those who do not want to submit to Christ shall be as a bird that wanders from, from, from her nest, which shall be snatched up by the next bird of prey. Those who do not yield to the fear of God shall be made to yield to the fear of everything else. Yahweh advises them to be kind to the seed of Israel, which represents the, which symbolizes the Christians. Those who expect to find favor when in trouble themselves must show favor to those in trouble. What is here said concerning the throne of Hezekiah, King Hezekiah, also belongs in a much higher sense to the kingdom of Yahshua. So by subjection to him, we may not enjoy worldly riches and or honors, but may be exposed to, po to, but, uh, exposed to poverty and contempt. We shall have peace of conscience and eternal life. Peace is priceless, priceless, and that is that what what Christians enjoy. Verse uh, Isaiah 16 verses 6 to 14, the pride and the judgments of Moab. Those who do not want to be counseled cannot be helped. More souls are ruined by pride that by then then by any other sin whatsoever also the very proud are commonly very passionate with lies many seek to gain the, gratifi the gratification of pride and passion but they shall not compass proud and angry projects moab was famous for fields and vineyards but they will be laid waste by the invading army. Yahweh can soon turn laughter into mourning and joy into heaviness. In Yahweh let us always rejoice with holy triumph. In earthly things let us always rejoice with, with holy trembling. The prophet looks with concern on the desolations of such a pleasant country. It causes inward grief, compassion we may say more exactly. The false gods of Moab are unable to help and God of Israel, the God of Israel, Yahweh, the only true God, Yahweh, can and will make good what he has spoken. Let Moab know her ruin in in very, that her her ruin is very near and prepare. Most important, prepare. When you are announced, when when a prophet announces that this is what would happen to you. This is a way, a way on you. That this is what, what, the, what God wants in that uh, is that you should go in prayers to repent and come to Him, that He may forgive you, and that prophecy will not happen. It, it, it doesn't mean that when you are told a prophecy, next year we will, you will be very sick. It, it was very threatening to you. Then you will say, Oh, God, 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 God is going to kill me. No. When God gives you a prophecy, He just wants you to repent of your sins and to, God, go, to go on your knees before Him and ask Him for forgiveness. 
and that prophecy will not come to pass. Amen. To the most powerful de declaration of divine wrath, discover the way of escape to those who take warnings. There is no escape but by submission to the son of David and devoting ourselves to him. And at length, when the appointed time comes, all the glory, prosperity, and multitude of the wicked will perish. But you, you the, repenting, the repented sinner, the repenting sinner, will not be destroyed along with them. Know this, and the Lord Yahweh will bless you. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray. Isaiah 16 and 17. O Moab, king of local oppressors of my homeland, your cities are ruined, destroyed in a night. In the name of Yeshua, O Moab, kingdom of local oppressors of my homeland, your cities are ruined, destroyed in a night. In the name of Yeshua, O Moab, O Moab, O Moab, look, the king, kingdom of local oppressors of my homeland. Your cities are ruined, destroyed in the night. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Amen. In the streets, you wear sackcloth. On the roof and in the public squares, you all well prostrate with weeping. In the name of Yeshua, in the streets, you wear sackcloth. And in the roofs and on the public squares, you all well prostrate with weeping. In the name of Yeshua, in the streets, you wear sackcloth. On the roof and in the public squares, you all well prostrate with weeping. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. You cry out. Your voices are heard all the way to the borders. Your arms men cry out and their hearts are faint. In the name of Yeshua you cry out. Your voices are heard all the way to the borders. Your armed men cry out and their hearts are faint. In the name of Yeshua you cry out. Your voices are heard all the way to the borders. Your armed men cry out and their hearts are faint. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Amen. My heart cries out over you. You fugitives, your fugitives flee far away, weeping as they go. They lament their destruction. In the name of Yeshua, my heart cries out over you. Your fugitives flee far away, weeping as they go. They lament their destructions. In the name of Yeshua, my heart cries out over you. Your fugitives flee far away, weeping as they go. They lament their destruction. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. The waters of fountains are dried up, and the grass is withered in your land. In the name of Yeshua, the waters of fountains are dried up, and the grass is withered in your land. In the name of Yeshua, the waters of fountains are dried up. The grass is withered in your land. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. The vegetation is gone and nothing is green. In the name of Yeshua, the vegetation is gone and nothing is green. In the, in, in, nothing green is left. In the name of Yeshua, the vegetation is gone, and nothing green is left. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Amen. So the wealth you have acquired and stored up, you carry away over the ravine of the poplars. In the name of Yeshua, so the wealth you have acquired and stored up, you carry away over the ravine of the poplars. In the name of Yeshua, so the wealth you have acquired and stored up, you carry away over the ravine of poplars. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. 
Him that mighty name of Yeshua that means I am we pray. Your outcry echoes along the border. Your welling reaches far away cities. In the name of Yeshua, your outcry echoes along the border. Your welling reaches far away cities. In the name of Yeshua, you that oppressor, you that kingdom of oppressors in our life. Your outcry echoes along the border. Your welling reaches a far, far away cities. Thank you, Lord, all to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, that means I am with prayer. Amen. Your waters are full of blood, but Yahweh will bring still more upon you. In the name of Yeshua, your waters are full of blood, but Yahweh will bring still more upon you. In the name of Yeshua, your waters are full of blood. But Yahweh will bring still more upon you. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, that means I Yahweh prayer. Yahweh will bring a lion upon your fugitives and upon those who remain in the land. In the name of Yeshua, you that kingdom of oppressors. Yahweh will bring a lion upon your fugitives and upon those who remain in the land. In the name of Yeshua, Yahweh will bring a land upon you, the, your fugitives and upon those who remain in the land. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Amen. You would have done well to unite with Christ's followers. In the name of Yeshua, you have done. You would have done well to unite with Christ's followers. In the name of Yeshua, you have. You would have done well to unite with Christ's followers. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Like fluttering birds pushed from the nest, O local oppressors, so are your women in the forts of your cities. In the name of Yeshua, like fluttering birds pushed from the nest, O local oppressors, so are your women at the forts of your cities. In the name of Yeshua, like fluttering birds pushed from the nest, O oh, local oppressors, so are your women at the forts of your cities. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Amen. You persuade yourself that the oppressor will come to an end and destruction will cease, that the aggressor will vanish from the land. In the name of Yeshua, you persuade yourself that the oppressor will come to an end and destruction will see that the aggressor will vanish from the land. In the name of Yeshua, you persuade yourself that the oppressor will come to an end and destruction will cease, that the aggressor will vanish from the land. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. In love, you say, a throne will be established in faithfulness, um, a faithfulness, a man will sit on it, or uh, one from the house of David, one who in, in who, one who in judging seeks justice and speaks the cause of righteousness, in the name of Yeshua in love. You say a throne will be established in faithfulness. A man will sit on it, one from the house of David, one who is judging. Uh, we, we, one who in judging seeks justice and speaks the cause of righteousness. In the name of Yeshua, in love, you say, a throne will be established in faithfulness. A man will sit on him, one from the house of David, one who in judging seeks justice and speaks the cause of righteousness. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. We have heard of your pride, how great is your arrogance, of your conceit and your insolence, but your boasts are empty. In the name of Yeshua, we have heard of your pride, how great is your arrogance, and of your conceit and of your indulgence, but your boasts are empty. In the name of Yeshua, we have heard of your pride. How great is your arrogance uh, of your conceit and your insolence, but your boasts are empty. Thank you, Lord. 
all to your glory. Him that might be the Messiah, we pray. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you well, you well together for your kingdom. In the name of Yeshua, therefore, you well, you well for together for your kingdom. In the name of Yeshua, therefore, you well, you well to, to, together for your kingdom. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua and Messiah, we pray. Lament and grieve for your memorial raising, raising cakes. In the name of Yeshua, lament and grieve for your memorial ra raising cakes. In the name of Yeshua, lament and grieve for your memorial raising cake. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua and Messiah, we pray. Your fields with them. Your wines also, vines also, in the name of Yeshua, your fields with her, your vines also. In